Hi, and welcome to a brief, albeit informative, vlog on one of the most essential pieces of kit a Roman legionary could have. I'll give you the scooter. As soon as people started poking each other with pointy things, some clever soul invented the shield, and since that moment, the shield has reflected the type of warfare its carrier was involved in. In reference to Rome, this was initially the hoplite style of battle, which meant spear-based warfare and a simple round shield. In the middle of the 6th century BC, Rome underwent the Servian reforms, which touched upon practically every aspect of Roman life. Needless to say, warfare was included. The hoplite still remained the richest class, still fought in the front line, and still fought as they always had done. However, the less well-off classes were now simply relegated to skirmishing. They too had a role in the infantry. The problem was how you could facilitate this type of soldier, who now lacked the bronze cuirass and heavy armour because they couldn't afford it. The answer was simple and cheap. It was the scutum. The scutum was a long oval shield, which was also curved. The curvature offset the need for heavy armour, thus the middle classes, as we probably could call them, could still fight as infantry. By the time of the Polybian Legion, which is the beginning of the 3rd century BC, the order of battle had been turned on its head. Now those equipped with the scutum formed the front two lines of battle in the hands of the Hestati and the Principes, the two main types of Roman infantry. Spears were now thrown in the form of javelins, and true spearmen, the triari, were stationed as the last line of the legion. We're not entirely sure how this came about. But what is important is that the scutum allowed the infantrymen to get closer with the enemy and use a sword. The hoplite and the time of the phalanx in Rome was over. As we enter the 1st century BC, the scutum changed further. The oval shape replaced by the rectangular shape more commonly seen and known. Auxiliaries, cavalry and skirmishers may have still retained their flat shields, but the Roman infantry was now becoming more and more standardised and the shield reflected that. And, as if by magic, we have them here. It's very light, because it's made of small pieces of wood, which are glued facing each other, uh, on top of each other. Um, think of plywood. Varro commented that the scutum derived its name from this act of cutting, from secuta to cut, in reference to all these small pieces. Around the edges, you can see there's a bronze rim, and this obviously stopped downward slashing, and sideways slashing strokes that strengthen it in general as well. The curve gives excellent protection, essentially for a soldier who's going to engage close with the enemy. Likewise, it meant that someone trying to get hold of you need to get in close and possibly extend themselves, which gave you the option of a counter thrust, and we know that legionaries were generally taught to go for the neck, groin and armpits, these are points of the body which are generally only opened up when someone's stretching themselves out, making themselves very vulnerable. The shield brought these people onto the Romans and made it a bit easier for the Romans to get the gladius in. But it wasn't just something to hide behind when some you know, hairy gore was trying to chop at you. The central boss could be used as a general weapon in itself. There are two instances Livy mentions of this, firstly in 308 BC against the Umbrians, and more famously when defeating Hannibal at Zama in 202 BC. Here, Livy wrote that the legionaries launched a charge with the shields on their shoulders, which broke through the Carthaginian line. Finally, there was the ergonomical factor. A large army moving around needed a standardised piece of kit, which was easy to stack, transport and keep. The rectangular shape ticked all of these boxes, as opposed to the oval one. In the field, the shield could be stood up, which may not seem that important, but if you're building a bridge, uh, digging a trench or a camp, simply resting the shield this way meant it was equipable in seconds if someone tried to attack you. It was better than it all being on the floor with others piled on top of it. This wasn't always a good thing. Soldiers on guard sometimes fell asleep leaning against their shields, and this usually resulted in execution. There was also a good reason to keep your shield stood up. Water tended to dissolve the glue holding the bits of wood together. It was made of uh, bits of fish. Wet ground wasn't therefore a great place to have your shield. And we know that this concern resulted in leather shield guards, big envelopes, were used by Roman legionaries to keep them as waterproof as possible. The scutum was something which tracked the changing needs of the Roman soldier. 
Initially, it allowed Rome to field a larger army by incorporating those who couldn't afford the hoplite gear as infantry units. By abandoning the hoplite way, Rome focused on developing the swordsman as its main infantry unit, and we know how successful that was. It was an excellent piece of defensive equipment, which forced the enemy into opening themselves up when attacking you and gave you an option of a counter strike. It could even be used as a potential shock weapon. Literally, it represented the legion and the legionary with the legion's emblem upon it. So if you faced a line of these, you knew that you were going to be in for a bit of a fight. It may not have been as flashy as the gladius or as fancy as some of the armour he wore, but it was very dependable. Possibly the best friend a legionary could ever have.